Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're continuing with the video that we started on the previous video. And where we left off was when we drew this diagram right here, we realized that we knew that the current initially had to be equal to the current right after the event happened. In other words, when the 3 amp current began to flow at this particular location at the current source, we knew that the current to the circuit right after should equal the current to the circuit before. Now be careful. It's not to this part of the circuit because we know that immediately a 3 amp current is being driven through the circuit over here, but we can see that over here there probably was no current flow, like for example through the capacitor the moment that that event started. And we also knew that the voltage across the capacitor could not change in that moment that the current began to be forced through that current source. So that's where we left off. Now what we're going to try to do is understand what else is happening. We're going to calculate the voltage across the inductor right after the event started. We're going to calculate the change in the current to the inductor as a function of time. We're going to try to calculate the voltage between the two nodes. And we're going to try to calculate the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across or between the two nodes. So all that we're going to try to calculate. And how do we start with that? Well, we're going to use the KVL and we're going to use the KCL rules. In other words, we're going to try to figure out what the voltage, the sum of all the voltages are around this loop and around this loop. We're going to start over here, go around this loop here. We're going to start from here and go around this loop here, add up all the voltages and see what we can learn from doing that. So let's, let's first start with loop number one. Start from here, across the voltage supply, across the capacitor, and across the inductor. So that means we have a 20 volt rise across the source. We have a 20 volt drop across the capacitor. Notice that the capacitor had reverse polarity that the, since this was a 20 volt across here, then this had to be 20 volts and this had to be zero volts. So go from there to there, that's a 20 volt drop across the capacitor right here. And then we have a voltage drop across the inductor. Now, why is it a voltage drop across the inductor? Well, as soon as current begins to flow, we can assume that current will flow around the loop in this direction. That's a good assumption when we're starting to drive current through the circuit using the voltage supply. When that happens, we have a reverse polarity voltage across the inductor that happens because the inductor is going to try to stop the current from increasing. Notice that initially the current will be zero, but as the current continues to flow, the current will increase in this direction. So we'll have a polarity reversed in direction across the inductor. That means that we're going to have a voltage drop across the inductor right after the event happens. We don't know what that voltage drop is, so that's what we're trying to calculate. But notice here we have a 20 volt rise across the source and a 20 volt drop across the capacitor. They cancel each other out. So minus voltage across inductor equals zero. So therefore the voltage across inductor equals zero right after the event happens, right after current begins to flow in the current source right here. Then we go to our, our uh, equations right here and notice that the voltage across inductor equals the inductance times the change of the current with respect to time which means that this is equal to this, and since the voltage across the inductor equals zero, the change in current across the inductor with respect to time at that moment, as time just passed the event, it will be zero as well. Now we're going to do, a, uh, we're going to sum the voltages across loop two. We're going to start at this point, across the source, across the capacitor, across this resistor, and across this resistor back to the start. So four items that we have to add up. So we have voltage rise across the source, 20 volts. A voltage across the capacitor. We're going to have a voltage across the resistor and a voltage across this resistor. Now again, just like before, we had a 20 volt rise across the source and therefore a 20 volt drop across the capacitor. So this will be 20 minus 20. Now we're going to assume that current is going to flow through the resistor like this, driven by this current source. So we're kind of taking a guess. We could be wrong, but that's okay. We're going to guess that this is at a higher potential than this. So when we go from here to here across the resistor, we have a voltage rise. So we're going to call this a plus voltage between the two nodes from one to two. And then we're going to have a voltage drop across this resistor because we can assume that current is going to flow this in this direction due to this current source. So that means we're going to have a voltage drop across the two ohm resistor. So minus the voltage across the resistor. 
Again, these two cancel each other out, which means that the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor must equal the voltage across the resistor over here, V sub R, at the very moment right after the current begins to flow through this, this current source. So at that very moment, the two voltages must be equal. We still don't know what the voltage is, but we know it must be equal. So now we're going to do a KCL rule at node number one. So we're going to take a look at this node and we look at all the currents entering the node and all the currents leaving the node. So we see a 3 amp current entering the node and we assume that current is going to flow in this direction across this resistor and in this direction across this resistor. So those are the two currents leaving. That means we have a 3 amp current into the node and the current across this resistor Am I, oh, I guess I'm doing it across this resistor first. The current drop across, the current through this resistor is going to be the voltage divided by the resistance. So it's going to be the voltage from 2 to 1 divided by the resistance. And then the current through this branch is going to be the voltage divided by the resistance. So V sub R divided by 2. But then in the previous equation, I realized that the voltage between the two nodes has to equal the voltage across the resistor. Which means that I can come over here and replace this voltage by the voltage across the resistor. And then if I then find the common denominator, I can add these two fractions together, and this ends up being three times the voltage across the resistor divided by four equals the current getting into the node. Divide both sides by three, multiply both sides by four, and I realize that the voltage across the resistor right after time equals zero is going to be four volts, which means that the voltage between the two nodes at that moment must be 4 volts as well, which means I found the voltage across the resistor, I found the voltage between the two nodes, and I found the voltage across the inductor right after time equals zero. And of course, I already knew my voltage across capacitor right after time equals zero, so I determined the voltage across here, 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 and here right after time equals zero. Of course, we're not done yet, we still have some additional things to calculate, but we're going to need another video, so we'll, uh, we'll do video 3, uh, 2C as the next video to continue with the problem. But so far, at least we know the voltages across all the components right after the current begins to flow through our current source. And that is how it's done.